Shalom Alechem Assalamu Alaikum. Peace be unto you. This is uh, not the usual type of video we do on this channel, but you will, you will have noticed if you've been uh, paying attention to the tabs in my browser that I've got a number of tabs open. And why do I have them open? Well, I've been wanting to discuss this on the channel. Uh, this is in regards to ancient Chinese culture. Uh, we're going to talk about the Zhao dynasty and the mandate of heaven. Uh, and how does that tie in with the Bible, the Jewish Bible? Uh, so we're going to try to connect dots or at least try to find some kind of a common ground uh, between the Jewish culture, the Jewish religion, and even Chinese, uh, ancient Chinese culture. So the Zhao dynasty was actually the, that was the dynasty that, that uh, took place around the time of the Septuagint, actually even before. It says here 1046 BC until 256 BC, and we know the Septuagint was written, uh, was translated from uh, the original Hebrew into the Greek around 250 BC. So we're going to just read about how uh, about their culture and society. This is all from Wikipedia. Mandate of Heaven. So anyone could just read this, but I found it really uh, kind of shocking and surprising in a lot of ways. So let's just read it uh, as it is. It says, Zhao rulers introduced the Mandate of Heaven which would prove to be among East Asia's most enduring political doctrines. According to the theory, heaven imposed a mandate to replace the Shang on the Zhao, whose moral superiority justified seizing Shang wealth and territory in order to return good governance to the people. So they believed that it was heaven above that uh, chose the ruler, essentially. The mandate of heaven was presented as a religious compact between the Zhao people and their supreme god in heaven. So notice that. A sup they believe in a supreme god in heaven. Do they believe that today? Uh, the Chinese government, anyway. I, I don't believe so. <laughs> I don't believe there's an acknowledgement of a one supreme god in heaven. But here we can see not only is there a belief of a supreme power, a god in heaven, but even the selection of a leader is via the mandate of heaven, by the choice of heaven. Okay, continuing on. The Zhao agreed that since worldly affairs were supposed to align with those of the heavens, the heavens conferred legitimate power on only one person, the Zhao ruler. Notice that whatever happens in the heavens, or what happens on the earth, is supposed to align with what happens in heaven does that does not that, uh, remind you of the prayer the disciples prayer the lord's prayer that they call it as in heaven so on earth interesting uh the zhao ruler in return uh, the ruler was duty bound to uphold heaven's principles okay where did they find these principles but anyway they just they said heaven's principles of harmony and honor harmony and honor okay any rule, uh, any ruler who failed in this duty, who let instability creep into earthly affairs, or who let his people suffer, would lose the mandate. So notice, there is honor involved. There is harmony. I'm not sure what that means, but there's also compassion on your people, on your those who are under you. So he would lose his mandate if things would not uh, would if he didn't adhere to this. Under this system, it, it was the prerogative of spiritual authority to withdraw support from any wayward ruler and to find another more worthy one. So that's, that's what would happen if a ruler was not fit, if he disqualified himself to be fit to rule because of the way he treated people, let people suffer, and so on, he would be disqualified and and then there would be uh, 
a mandate, essentially, to find a more worthy ruler. That is very, it's very interesting, that, that system, that belief. In this way, the Zhao sky god legitimized regime change. And using the, this creed, the Zhao rulers had to acknowledge that any group of rulers, even they themselves, could be ousted if they lost the mandates of heaven because of improper practices. The Book of Odes, written during the Zhao period, clearly intoned this caution. The Zhao kings, kings contended that heaven favored their triumph because the last Shang kings had been evil men whose policies brought pain to the people through waste and corruption. Now, I want to mention a, like a disclaimer for this video. I'm not saying that the Zhao god, the Zhao sky god, is the same as the god of the Bible. I'm just trying to draw parallels and connections between uh, some themes and common uh, common themes anyway, any commonalities that I could recognize. One of the duties and privileges of the king was to create a royal calendar. Okay, they had their own calendar too. Uh, this official document defined times for undertaking agricultural activities, so harvest perhaps, and celebrating rituals. But unexpected events such as solar eclipses or natural calamities threw the ruling house's mandate into question. Since rulers claimed that their authority came from heaven, the Zhao made great efforts to gain accurate knowledge of the stars and to perfect the astronomical system on which they based their calendar. So that's an interesting point because, uh, as Yeshua HaMashiach said, uh, did the earthquake that happened and then the Tower of Siloam fell, fell on uh specific individuals, was that because they were evil? No, he said time and chance happened to all. However, I suppose you could say, you know, solar eclipses and natural calamities, did they happen because the ruler was necessarily evil? Or was that happenstance? Was, was that simply time and chance? So that is a bit of a dangerous ground. Zhao legitimacy also arose indirectly from Shang material culture through the use of bronze ritual vessels, statues, ornaments, and weapons. Okay, the statues, that's definitely not, that's not uh, common ground. 2013, okay, I'm not sure why it says 2013, as the Zhao emulated the Shang's large-scale production of ceremonial bronzes, they developed an extensive system of bronze metalworking that required a large force of tribute labor. Many of its members were Shang, who were sometimes forcibly transported to New Zhao to produce the bronze ritual objects, which were then sold and distributed across the lands, symbolizing Zhao legitimacy. I think that's... So here's a one ceremonial bronze cooking vessel. Okay, uh, I'm not going to try to connect the dot there. But I think we will go on to uh, the mandate of heaven itself, which is in another tab. Okay, so let's look at that. We can officially close that now. This might be a little too long to read, but uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, it might be a little too long to read. Might have to be its own video. Yeah, I might have to do this in another video altogether. But just to get our feet wet and uh, kind of see, yeah, there seems to be... Anyway, this is so far removed from the present state of China, not just governmentally, but even uh, religiously. It seems so far away and even morally. And do, does any, do any Chinese not just know about these things, but do they adhere to this, to the mandate of heaven and and the the principles that were espoused, such as honor and so on and so forth, you know, compassion for the people. It just seems so far removed. Uh, so yeah, I think we'll do this in another video, just titling it The Mandate of, he of Heaven. 
Okay, so that's all for this video. Thank you for your time. I just thought this would be an interesting topic because, yes, there are other cultures as well that have uh, similar similarities to the Bible. We could even say, uh, just mention them in passing, such as uh, Scotland, Ireland. You know, we have they have interesting ties, potential links uh, to maybe King David. I know there's a lot of uh, theories on the lost tribes of Israel. Are they uh, British and American, uh, there's a lot of different ideas, but I wanted to look at this because this seems so, uh, I didn't know about this. <laughs> this was really eye-opening to me that uh, when you look at the history of ancient China and even the philosophies that came out of there, this really stands out to me, the mandate of heaven. So we're going to look in that, we're going to look at this uh, in more depth more in depth in another video. I don't want to uh, just <laughs> read all of this in one sitting. So we'll do that another time. Thank you very much for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, I bid you all Shalom Aleichem, Assalamu Alaikum, Irini Mazisu, Pax Peace be unto you, and Maranatha.